Why do you not make character tutorial? Why, young fellow, I've already made this tutorial. Easy in Blender. Well, I also made this one, which is pretty easy. And animated? Well, you see, animation is a very complex- Easy because you suck at animation- Oh, wait! So you want some game characters ready for animation and games that you can create fast and easy? Just fire up a relatively new version of Blender and let's get cooking. For starters, let's make the rendering look a little nicer by choosing matte cap cavity. Now with this default cube, instead of destroying it, tab into edit mode, right click, and merge those vertices down to the center. So we have a single point. Then hippity hop over to your modifier tab, add a new modifier, choose generate, and skin. Our cube's back, in a sense, but with the skin modifier, we can extrude that point now and make some cool geometry. Let's add a little more detail to that geometry. Add modifier, generate, subdivision surface. That's looking way better. And now, instead of doing more complex modeling, which is going to be a little difficult for beginners that just want to make a character quick in Blender that they can start making games with, like the OG legend Danny. We use this video to make glorious creations. Now we have another method that is actually easier than that, that I think will help a lot of people that just need to create a quick character for a project. Sponsor time! Upgrade your abilities. Get better at everything. Improve your already fabulous fashion style. And just constantly be learning new cool stuff on Skillshare. I actually recently released my first class ever on Skillshare for creating an isometric sci-fi world in Blender. If you're interested in a new fun project and some low poly sci-fi 3D modeling. It's also a great beginner introduction into geometry nodes for creating sci-fi buildings and scattering assets with Blender's new powerful geo node tools. And aside from lots of fun, unique Blender projects, you can learn just about anything on Skillshare. It's the largest online community for learning creatives. With new classes always being added, you can always find something fun to improve your abilities further. And for the first 500 viewers to sign up for Skillshare with my link in the video description, you get a free month of Skillshare and with it access to my new sci-fi tutorial class, along with tens of thousands of other classes already on Skillshare. So check it out with that link in the description. So starting off, we'll build the torso of our character using this single point. Granted, this won't be like AAA title advanced. Maybe it will be. So I'm going to scale it up a bit bigger by going control A. Yeah, I know, control A for scaling. It's weird. Then we'll extrude it up a short bit amount. We go and control A to scale it up a bit bigger. Extrude it up again. We'll build a chest for our character here. Extrude it up one more time along that Z axis. And then control A, scale it down. Now you can't see the points through the mesh until you click that button. Now you can. So then we'll just kind of pull this up to give him some broad chest. And you see that little dot there? A little red circle there? That's the root. We want to mark that at the base of our dude. That's looking pretty good. Then you can extrude that up again. Extrude again along the Z. Control A, scale this up for more of a face section. Neck might be a little skinny. So this one will kind of pull it forward a little bit to give him sort of a chin. Extrude it up again. A little bit big, so we can grab both those. Control A. Maybe scale that middle one up a little bit. Get a nice little head for our character. A little bit of curvature going on. And then we'll finish off with sort of the torso bottom portion of the character here by screwing that down, scaling it up a little bit. Now for the arms and legs, it's as simple as grabbing our bottom root bone. Shift D to duplicate it. Control A to scale her down. Now we can keep this one kind of big, pulling it up a little bit, extruding it out. You get the gist of it. This ain't too hard. Now anywhere you want some definition for like a joint, you can do a few little extrusions where you extrude it, scale it down a little bit, and then extrude it and scale it up a bit. Extrude it one more time. We don't need a ton of definition for this character. It's a low poly. Maybe we'll put one more in here. So you can just grab both these spots. Right click. Subdivide. A little extra joint there for a little bit more control. I still don't really know what's happening up here. I'm not going to lie. That was just something that happened. Play around with that kneecap till it looks a little less weird. Something like that's not too bad though. And then grab that point. Duplicate it up here again. We're going to have to mark this one as a root as well. Control A to scale it up a little bit. Extrude out for that shoulder. Keep this kind of inside the mesh. Extrude again, scale up, give them a little bit of muscles going on there. You can actually get detailed enough if you want to, and it's pretty easy with the skin modifier to do fingers. So I'm gonna go to top view, and what you can do is you can extrude out for some fingers. So I'm just gonna go extrude there, extrude then you'll see the mesh gets really wonky, and we'll extrude it there. We're just gonna do four fingers. The four fingers should be enough, and then we're gonna scale all those points down by grabbing all of them going control A. Now this one, which is the thumb, we'll extrude again. Bada bing! You can 
can grab all those as well. Kind of rotate them from this angle then. Be a hand. Don't need giant hands on this dude, you know? And if you find you have a vertices somewhere you don't really like, Bruh. just hit X and then dissolve vertices and you get rid of it. And now what you can do is if your cursor is still in the center, perfect. If it's not, just go Shift S, cursor to world origin. Hit L to select the loose part of that leg. Hit L to select the arm by hovering over it and go Shift D. And then hit escape to jump out of that. Hit period and a keyboard and choose the 3D cursor as a pivot point. Then you can just hit S, X, and negative one to scale it along the X axis. Negative value to flip it over to the right side there. And this is your base character. What you can actually do here, which is really sweet, is rig it with a button click. By clicking create armature, the boom, you have a rig on your character now as well. And this is pretty sweet. There's some areas like right here where you don't need an extra bone and you can just go X and dissolve bone. So this one too, we don't need X dissolve bone. So it's a little easier for these bones to go to your armature settings, viewport display, change them from stick to B bone. Now, if you hit the most complicated shortcut in Blender, control, alt, shift, S, you can scale the size of those bones down. And a little easier to get those lined up the way you want them. In the neck here, we have oh, extra bones. We don't need you. Dissolve that bone. And uh, we don't need you either. Dissolve that bone. So that was easy. Now let's make this character a little bit more stylized. Let's just turn off the rig for now because we don't really need to work with it. And we'll make a duplicate of our character in case you want to adjust the skin modifier on it. But otherwise, you don't need it anymore. So you can just go apply and then also apply the subdivision service modifier. And you can see we have two of them now, one with the modifier still on it. Just hit H to hide it, and you have a duplicate here now. And now to make our low poly character look just a little bit better, we can turn on proportional editing. Clicking this cute little button here allows you to move things all in conjunction with your scroll wheel affecting the range that it pulls things with it. Go to the side view. This guy looks a little bit like a tin can right now, so we can, again, proportional editing. Ease your friend. Give him a little bit more botox, pulling his chest a little bit more center there. And what you can do is because we mirrored it and we're straight down the middle, you can click the x-axis mirror there. And so now when you tweak one side, it uh, tweaks the other side. Pull that joint out right there. A little more jawline. Give him a little bit of a nose, I guess. Something like that. So let's give him like a cool medieval helmet because maybe this guy's like going to war. But what we can do is we can just grab the top part of the vertices here, hit shift D to duplicate that cap, extrude it by hitting E and scaling. I'll have to turn off proportional editing by hitting O and scaling that up a little bit. And now if we just hit L to select that loose part, we can double tap R to kind of rotate it back. Check it from side view. We'll have to... He's got like a cap on now. That looks kind of, kind of cool. We'll scale that up along the Z a little bit. Make it a little bit taller. And then... Let's grab these. And we'll grab the one on the other side. And we'll just extrude both those up. And then scale them along the X. Any sort of horn here, go for like a loopy. I'm doing this by hitting D and just drawing, scribbling on the screen. I'm just going to grab that face, with face select mode selected. Double tap R to kind of rotate it, as we want to kind of come this way a little bit. Rotate you that way then. Extrude, scaling it down a little bit as we rotate. And rotate it some more. From the front view, we want it to kind of be doing this shape. Rotate it around. There you have it. Now, same thing on the other side. There's your little barbarian character. Now you might be asking, Steve, no way do you have time to also add materials to this guy in this single tutorial. Just hold up. Of course I'm going to add materials. Why wouldn't we? So go to your material, switch to your EV render engine here, and give this guy a nice sort of skin color material. And then we'll give him some subsurface scattering by cranking this up a little bit. Scale will go to about a 0.8. Keep these values below one in general, and that's going to be pretty good. And then just go ahead and make another material. Bada bing. This will be a metallic material, so give it 100% metallicness. Give it sort of a dark silver color. Have into edit mode, hit L to select that helmet and assign the new material to it. We can just make that color a little bit brighter. And now he's also naked, which isn't ideal, um, especially if you're a Viking. So for this, just grab the ring around his chest there. Hit Shift D to duplicate it. Scale it up a little bit. Turn off the mirroring for this. Scale it a little bit. Pull it down. Extrude. Scale a little bit. This is a little kilt, a little skirt and scale it down a little bit. And now we give a new material for this clothing, which this will be sort of like a leather, darker material, something like that. Hit L to select that and assign it to it. I thought it was kind of cool if you had like an armband. So what I did is I 
switch to face select by clicking that or hitting three uh, number pad. Right click a ring on his shoulder there, extrude it and scale it up a little bit. And assign, a doom a ring around it. And over here you can kind of do like a little shoulder piece. This guy just kind of has on his muscle to just like protect this biceps just in case in war his bicep gets hit. You don't want this one to get ruined because he's proud of this one over here. And assign the leather material over there. And look at this. Now some people will probably say that you need the face. Grab a face up here, shift D it, pull it down, and then move into the side here, just using my middle mouse. Or you could use your number pad keys, pull it to the side a little bit, rotate it, pull it out. New material, we'll just leave this one blank white and assign it to it. Looks good. Do the same thing on the other side. And then we need some uh, eyeballs inside of there. So then go control R, put a little cut on that eye to give him an eyebrow. Add new material, give this one a black material, switch to face select again, Bada bing, and then apply that black material to those eyelids. Then hit I to inset a face on that eyeball as well. Scale along the x-axis, rotate a little bit, assign a color to it, and it looks pretty good. Grab these two vertices and double tab G to make him a little angry. If you wanna get extra mean, you give him a mouth. So we'll duplicate two faces for a mouth. New material, give this one an inside of a mouth-like material and assign it to it. Give him a nice yelling, yelling expression. <laughs> Melt down like he's angry. Hit control R. Bada bing, you got some teeth. So you grab those two faces and assign the white material to it. And this character is looking pretty freaking awesome. Now guess what? It gets even better, because we can actually do some more to the materials here. So grabbing a skin color material, split your window, open up a shader editor on the other side here, and all you need to do is add in the AO node by going Shift A, Input, Ambient Occlusion, then go Shift A and add in a color mix color. Now the top vector of this mix node is gonna be our skin color color, so just click the little eyedropper, grab the color. Bottom factor is gonna be the AO node. The mix type, it's gonna be soft light. Switch it to that, connect that up to the base color. And now all we need is a color ramp to control the ambient occlusion. So go shift A, add in a converter color ramp, drop it right in there. Crank the blacks up nice and tight. You can already see that kind of definition coming into our character. You can increase the amount here by adjusting the factor on your soft light node. But you can see that gives you some sort of cool shading without having to do any sort of texture painting or manual work. You can adjust the distance on your ambient occlusion node a little bit as well. Now some of you might be saying, Steve, you can't get this cool looking material in your game engine though. Hold up. Now it's time for cooking with Steve. Start by entering your kitchen. In this case, splitting your window and opening up a UV editor and adding a new plate for your dish. You can call this anything. Then stick this plate into your kitchen and have it selected. Now go ahead and open up your pantry, switch the render engine to cycles, scroll to the bottom, and go to your bake. And make sure you're cooking with ambient occlusion, aka AO. Then get your hands dirty by tabbing into edit mode, hitting A to select everything, and U, smart UV project. Yes, we're quick and we're lazy around here. Now if you're ready to sit back for 3 to 50 seconds, you can choose bake. Cancel that bake, switch it to GPU compute, and bake again. It'll be a lot faster. Once the dish is done, pull it out of the oven, put it in the desktop or something, and then when you're ready to serve it, go ahead and add it back into your scene. And this texture can be brought in to your game engine and used in the exact same Fashion. Thank you for coming to my cooking class. You all suck. By the way, you'll be able to download this finished rig character on Patreon and also get access to tons of other sweet Blender files while supporting the channel. Now that our character is more or less finished, we can go ahead and add it to our armature. If you moved your mesh at all, you might have to move your rig a little bit to make sure that your fingers and stuff are lined up. And so just grab your rig character, grab your rig, and go Control P with automatic weights. Now if you jump into pose mode with the rig selected, you can see you can animate but bomb your character. Now some of these weights might need to be adjusted to be ideal, but hey, that's pretty good. And he's ready for animation. He's got muscles, dude. He's got muscles. There's a few things that you need to do the rig, like grab the shoulder bones and the chest bone, go control P, keep the offset. Same thing with the legs. Grab the base bone, control P, keep the offset. Now I have videos like this one, or this one, on how to create cool animations in Blender, but essentially, Shoot some dope looking, absolutely cool looking reference footage. Open that reference footage up into Blender. Then with automatic keyframing enabled, just scroll through your video 
making these poses to line up with your super awesome reference footage without too much work, you will have a relatively decent looking subpar animation. Now some of these weights might have to be assigned manually on the rig. Like the head is probably not gonna work to move everything right now as you can see, but you can fix this really easy. Just keep note of what bone the head is. It's bone three. So I'm gonna jump to the mesh, jump to our data, and under our vertex groups, we need to work on bone three. There's bone three. Tab into edit mode, hit L to grab the eyeballs and mouth and assign them to bone three. And you can see that that mouth is moving a lot better now. So that wraps up how to create characters fast and easy animated and ready for game engines. And since this low poly character looks pretty cool, I thought it might be a fun project to 3D print. So I sliced it in Bamboo Studio and then printed it over here on the X1 Carbon from Bamboo Labs. They sent this over for me to use in the studio and included the additional AMS system, which allows you to print with up to four different filaments. I've been having a lot of fun making different things on this 3D printer for the past few months. It's been super reliable and super fast and just super easy to use. Everything is wireless. So it's like anyone can do it. I combined a few of the different filaments for our low poly character and I think the 3D print turned out pretty cool. And he makes for a nice little desk buddy. If you got any other challenges for me, I'll leave it down in the comment section below. But that's gonna do it for me, guys. Peace out. Hey, why is the green screen so bad if you call yourself CG Geek? It's like, who has that time when I have way more important stuff to do? <laughs> like making these ultra-realistic looking TikToks.